Right, so today I'm going to be installing some entertainment in the van. I've been looking around online for a long time to try and find a 12 volt projector that actually delivered a HD resolution output. Most of them say they are HD re uh, projectors, but all that means for the cheaper ones is that they'll accept a HD uh, picture, they won't actually project a HD picture back out again. Most of the resolutions on the cheaper 12 volt projectors are really rubbish. You're talking really old school PC type uh, resolutions, and you just can't really make out any writing or anything like that on the projection. So I've been looking around online for ages now, trying to find a high quality 12 volt projector, and I managed to found, uh, find one on eBay. This one's an AXA Technologies one. It actually gives out a proper 720p HD resolution as its native output resolution, so that means that it will actually output a HD picture. That's what I wanted for inside the van. Now I was thinking how am I going to get some sound to it and uh, I was thinking of having to go around the whole rigmarole of having to install the car battery, uh, sorry your car stereo, uh, speakers, things like that. But instead I managed to find a pair of uh, PC speakers that I had in the house that I just haven't been using for a while. It's a nice 2.1 system, uh, Philips, the so uh, sounds really nice out of these, especially with a nice little sub there as well. And when I checked on the power supply that actually came with them, it's actually a 12 volt uh, system as well uh, for the speakers. So I'm going to be cutting the end of the adapter off for the speakers, the end of a adapter that I've ordered online for the projector. The projector is 12 volt as well, as you can see there. That's why I was really happy when I managed to find it online, because normally that's a £250 projector and I didn't pay that for it. Uh, to make sure that it wasn't going to be getting any voltage spikes if the battery itself is on charge through solar or anything like that, I wanted to be sure that it was only ever going to be getting a pure stable 12 volt supply. So online I ordered a, it's considered a car adapter for TVs and things like that, it will accept anything from 12 to 30 volts and it will only ever put out a nice steady 12 volt up to 5 amp and that's exactly what the adapter came with the projector. <coughs> I'd say that projector is an actual 240 volt projector and it came with a similar sort of block like that that just uh, transforms the power down to 12 volt for the projector itself so to be sure that I'm only ever going to be getting a nice smooth 12 volt supply to the projector I went out and bought one of these it was only about 13 14 pound on eBay and I'd say that just makes sure that the projector itself will only ever get 12 volts it won't get any 13 14 volts if the battery was on charge just to protect all of the electronics inside it now I'm probably going to be mounting it inside the overhead compartment so when I want to watch it I'll just raise the overhead compartment up and then slide it back down and I'm going to be having a roller blind I'm probably going to be mounting it either on the ceiling or onto the uh, sideboards and just rolling it down it's uh, going to be a blackout blind I managed to get that uh, on sale recently so that already cost me a fiver so that's not bad for a full size what's going to be uh, it should be a good projection screen now I was already planning on installing something around here entertainment wise whether it's going to be a TV projector something like that so I've already ran a 12 volt cable from my fuse box that's under my bed up to the switch panel under the miscellaneous switch then the cable's going up into the metalwork there through and it's already in the overhead locker so there's the 12 volt lead that I already had installed ready for either as I say a TV installation or a projector anything like that so I've already got a full 12 volt 11 amp supply there and I say the projector already uses 5 amp and even with the speakers on top the speakers already use 1.2 amp so that's still going to be plenty left on that cable even though there's not going to be anything else actually wired onto it so I say with that already being in place it's just going to be a case of cutting the cigarette lighter end off the car adapter connecting that to the 12 volt supply and then just connecting it into the back of the projector doing the same for the car, uh, the, the speakers just snipping the wire running that and I managed to locate where I can put this little sub the sub can go under the bed I'll show you that in a minute and that cable will be able to run up the panel and into the supply for the 12 volt there that's just running along there and behind there so that's it, I'll get cracked on, I'll get all these uh, cables stripped down, get the panel stripped back, I'll show you exactly what I'm going to do and how it's wired up and show you it all working.
Right, so there's all my audio all wired in and ready for testing. I say that's the sub, just fitted lovely in between my gas heater and the frame of the bed. There's no room for it to move around, wiggle around. The cables are then fed behind this little carpeted panel, run across there, and then as you saw earlier on, they're fed up behind the uh, carpeted panel. I've got one satellite speaker there that has the power and the volume control. The other one's on the other side, just to give a left and a right to the actual sound. Uh, the cable for that satellite is behind that panel and ran down the side. The one for this one runs behind the panel, and then it jumps up and along the top of the sliding door runner rail. I just managed to get a little cable uh, poker stick and just run that all the way along with the cable attached to the end of it. It just loops over there into the overhead locker and then I've got an extension just there. And then again that one runs down, down the side and into the sub as well. Everything go, uh, attaches into the sub including the power source as well. And as I say I'm just about to fire it up now just to make sure it sounds nice and uh, make sure it's all working properly. And because I do have a power meter I can actually find out exactly how much power it's drawing at the moment. As you can see there I'm currently using 15 watts but that's because I've got two spotlights on and I've got my six uh, down lighters as well just to be sure that you can actually see everything so I'm just going to plug the speakers into my phone just to give it a test fire just make sure it sounds okay and then if it does I'll get it wired into the projector and uh, we'll be getting there right so just to give these speakers a try I've just got my phone there I've just got the radio station playing on it and I've got the speakers for the cable so if I plug these in the actual sound should start coming out the speakers and it should sound a hell of a lot better quality than just out the phone so let's give it a plug in and find out there we go, there's the sound out the speakers nice bit of uh, bass coming out the sub as well obviously the sound can be controlled just by my phone or by the uh, volume control on the speakers themselves so that's the speakers all working and tested so now I've just got to get it all wired up onto the projector and make sure that's working and give it a test fire right so I've now just finished the wiring for the projector I was going to use the 12 volt uh, transformer and uh, that was the idea that was to provide a nice smooth 12 volt supply to the projector itself but I've just gave the projector just a really quick test fire just to see how much power it was using on my power meter under the bed and when it was going through the transformer it was using up to 7 amps now when I took the projector off that I've just put it onto the 12 volt live feed with an inline fuse with a 5 amp fuse in there uh, and yeah it's only using just four and a half to 5 amps so that means that that transformer itself was trying to use an additional two amps just to try and smooth out the supply and pretty much the same sort of uh, you get pretty much the same sort of result just by using an inline fuse because if that's got a five amp fuse in it then obviously anything over there and the fuse should pop before anything inside the projector pops so the transformer was a good idea but I'm not going to go, uh, go ahead and use that I'm just going to have it directly lined uh, wired into the 12 volt supply with the inline fuse wired in just for protection more than anything else because I just don't see the point in wasting an additional 2 amps an hour just for the transformer alone as it's not going to be doing anything else other than just providing power to the projector and for it to be wasting 2 amps just to provide the power when as I say an inline fuse should smooth out the supply anyway I'm just going to go with that so now I've had it quickly test fired up made sure it was all running on the inline fuse I'm going to get the screen in place we'll give it a test fire and see what it looks like alright so I've been busy on the screen I've been crafting along uh, I managed to find a shop that was selling off clearance blackout blinds for a fiver they didn't have uh, any three foot ones so I bought a five foot one and I've cut it down to three foot that's how wide it is for the actual ceiling for the uh, high top so the extra little bits that I've actually used for cut offs I might be able to use those bits to black out some of the driving and passenger doors as well or maybe the back doors I'll have a look as well so now we've just got to reassemble all this back together put the bottom strips back in get the runner back back together and then we'll get it fitted into the high top and see what it looks like Right, so I've just got the screen in place. As I say, I've just got clips either side of the roof line. They are quite tight, so it keeps the screen in solidly in position. 
and then just to take it out you just wedge it open just ever so slightly and then the screen itself just falls straight away so then you don't even have to leave the screen in all the time you can just put it in if you think you're going to be using the projector and if not because as I say I, I won't really be using the projector that often and it's just going to be a case of nice to have rather than an essential but it means that when I am going to be planning on using it I can just clip this screen into place and because it's just a box standard roll of blind it just rolls straight down into place so that is the projection screen so I'm going to get the projector wired up give it a test fire and see what it looks like on the screen Right, so there is the projector fully wired up, fully working. I'll just turn the lights back on. As you can see, that's just in the overhead projector. It's just based on a daft little tripod. It's not actually securely fastened down, so that means it's never going to be left actually in the van. It's very rarely ever going to be taken away anyway. It's going to be more of a nice to have than a need to have. So it's all wired in, it's all working. As you can see, it's uh, as you, you can't really make it out much while the lights are on. But obviously when you're using a projector it's always going to be pretty much during the evenings anyway. So I'll just turn the lights off and I'll just put uh, something on and then I'll be able to show you the picture quality and the sound coming out with the speakers. And that'll be my 12 volt projector fully wired up, working, tested and good to go. So as I say I'll just uh, put something on now and uh, show you what it's like. So there we go, there is my projector fully working with the sound all wired up into my speakers. Uh, in that episode where you... Wife? Why are you so fat? Brian, look. I purchased authentic blueprints to build a Star Trek transporter. What? Let's turn that back off. But, uh, there you go. That is my 12 volt projector. Fully wired up, fully working. I've measured the screen distance going from corner to corner. That's generally how you measure screens. It's running out at round about a 40 inch, uh, 46 inch screen. And that's uh, pretty impressive for inside a camper van, really, to have a 46 inch screen with a full 2.1 surround with uh, a sub under the bed as well. So I'm really impressed with that. It's, it's just not going to show the actual quality of the uh, video while I'm actually filming it on just a sports cam here as well. There's probably going to be lots of flicker showing through. Uh, but there we go. That is how I have uh, fully wired in my uh, 12 volt AXA 12 volt projector and got it fully working. As I say, just go back. I think it's even got uh, something built uh, built on as well. This is a demo. And that's uh, some speedway racing. This just came with the actual uh, camera already. Uh, sorry, the projector already. As you can see, just... Uh, it's going to be a hell of a lot better than just having to rely on a daft little laptop or a small little project, uh, small little TV that I used to use. And just turn the speakers off, and then when I'm done, just turn the projector off. Roll up the screen, and as I say, when it's not in use, I'm just going to unclip the screen straight out the projector just removes the plug from there one straight out the back and as I say that will never actually be left in the uh, van that's just for as and when I know I'm actually going to be using it and then even when I'm away from the van it's that small as I say it fits in your palm of your hand it's that small and tiny it'll easily go in a bag so I say that'll never be left in the van either and then this uh, leaves the overhead locker nice and empty and free as well so, I hope you found the video useful, and uh, if you did, as I said, do have a look at my channel. I've documented the entire conversion of this van on my channel, uh, so have a look there. There's loads of other videos on there, and do subscribe. I'm still going to be updating the channel with more videos as they come as well, so I say, hope you found the video useful. Rate, subscribe, and share. Cheers. Thanks for watching.